So you're a billionaire. The problem with being a billionaire is that you make a lot of money, a lot of taxable money that you don't want the government to get the grubby little hands on, which is understandable because they'll probably waste it on things like $61,000 homeless tents. You worked for your money, you proved that you were smarter and more capable than the rest, you should be able to keep your money. So we need a way to hide your wealth discreetly to reduce your tax burden. You could buy something like a yacht, but as they say, the two happiest days of a man's life is the day he buys a yacht and the day he sells a yacht. They cost a ton of money to maintain, they're huge, they can't go up in value all that much, and they're hardly discreet. Real estate is a similar story. It's definitely not portable, it doesn't go up in value that much, and it's hard to hide. Stocks, on the other hand, can go to the moon, but stocks are tracked electronically and fall under the jurisdiction of governments that can easily seize your assets. We need a financial instrument that is a small, extremely concentrated store of wealth that's discreet, hard to track, easy to transport, and ideally can skyrocket to the moon. Enter Fine Arts a high-end industry that the ultra-wealthy use to store their money, hide their money, move their money around the world, legally avoid taxes, and for the more shady bunch, launder their dirty money. And the way this opaque industry works may be shocking. And at the end of the video, we're going to be giving away $1,000 of my own money directly to one of you. So make sure you stick to the end. But none of this matters if you're not a billionaire. And as longtime viewers of this channel know well, if there's one tried and true way to becoming a billionaire, it's by launching your own business. The problem is the internet is filled with an endless sea of business gurus that have never actually started a real business. Fortunately, finding that next big thing to capitalize on has never been easier thanks to today's video sponsor, Trends. Trends provides you with important updates about up and coming things that need to be on your radar right now. Think of Trends as sort of like your smart friend from 2013. You know, the one that would never shut up about that thing called Bitcoin? With a Trends membership, you can learn about emerging technologies before they change the world. Stick to the end to learn more or stop what you're doing right now, pause the video, and get your first week of Trends for just $1 by going to trends.co slash jaketran. The link is in the video description below. Okay, great. Now that you're a billionaire, it's time for step one, buying the art. You can't just buy any art though. See, the fine art world is a very exclusive circle that is made up of only a few exquisite galleries or dealers where the art gets sold for the first time, and two major auction houses where art gets resold for increasingly higher prices. Both take a percentage of how much they sell the art for. The galleries and dealers are kind of like the Federal Reserve, the money printer of the United States. They're the ones who pick who they think the best up-and-coming artists are. And since their high status has so much pull in the art world, the artists they promote end up being the most sought-after artists with the most expensive works. Not necessarily because their art is the most beautiful, but because they were the chosen artists. Oh, oh, hi. Oh, hi. So the galleries and dealers kind of artificially set the value of these artists. So these are the works of art you want to buy. So you go to the gallery of your choice, pick a piece, they don't put the price on display, so you're gonna have to ask. And when you finalize a price, it's time for step number two. Where are you gonna store the arts? Now there are two kinds of ultra wealthy that buy fine arts. One are the people that genuinely enjoy art. They want to display it proudly in their home for everyone to see just how cultured they are. I probably fall more into this category. Minus, you know, the billionaire part. And then you have the ones that purely see art for what we called it, a financial instrument to grow their money and get the government's grubby hands off of their wealth. I can definitely see the appeal of this camp too. So determine which side you're on for the particular pieces you picked up. If you want to hang up that beautiful painting, you'll have to pay some sales tax, which sucks. But that is the price one has to pay to admire beauty. If you don't really care what the artworks look like, you're in luck. Because what you can do is purchase the artwork and have it shipped directly to what's called a free port. Free ports are a beautiful thing. They're giant warehouses that you can think of as the physical equivalent of a Swiss bank account, or at least what a Swiss bank account used to be since they're not so private anymore. Anyhow, free ports are warehouses where you can store your newfound art anonymously so it's invisible to tax authorities, foreign governments without any taxes. Like the oldest free port in Geneva, Switzerland, which is reported to hold 1.2 million artworks in a dark, locked building, valued at an estimated $100 billion. Now that you either have your art displayed in your home or locked away in a free port, it's time to pump up those numbers. I'm gonna pump those numbers up. Those are rookie numbers in this racket.
art is like any other asset like real estate or stocks. If you're selling your home and similar houses in your neighborhood keep selling for higher and higher prices, that means your house is valued at that higher price. If you own a painting from one artist and other pieces from that artist keep selling at higher and higher prices, well the value of your painting goes up too, at least on paper. And this is where the galleries and dealers would do most of the work. Since most prestigious galleries get the artists they choose to work exclusively through them, they can do some pretty cool tricks to up the value of their art and thus upping their commission. Once they sell a painting to you, they can use their influence to hype up the artist to create more demand. They can host prestigious exhibits, get influential writers to write about them, they can auction off some other pieces of art and have their friends bid on them to increase their value. Things like this that artificially or actually get the value of the painting to go up. The higher the better. And then it's time for the moment you've all been waiting for, realizing those gains. You have a couple options here. Let's say in this scenario, you had a stellar year where you got a hundred million dollar income from one of those projects that a typical billionaire has going on. Great, right? Wrong! Because you're in the highest tax bracket, you're going to be paying a disgusting 37% income tax. And that's just federal. Now, it's not exactly 37% and billionaires probably wouldn't accept this money as income, but to keep it simple, we'll assume that this is the case. Which means that $37 million of your life is going towards Uncle Sam, more than what most people can ever even conceive of, much or less make. We obviously can't have that now, so here's what we're gonna do. Let's say you bought a painting for $10 million a few years back, and today it's now worth a nice $50 million, you five extra money on paper. Doesn't mean you're gonna be able to find a buyer for 50 mil, but that's what you can claim on paper. These numbers are not that out of the ordinary, by the way, being that this Leonardo da Vinci painting sold for 450 million recently, and of course we have the infamous Beeple NFT that sold for 69.3 million. So you put 10 mil into this financial instrument, now you have 50 mil on paper, and you have that disgusting 37 mil tax bill staring at you in the face. Well, what you can do is donate that painting to a museum, and then you can write off that 50 mil donation to reduce your $100 million taxable income. It's not that simple though, so bear with me for a sec. This is a good time to say that I'm not an accountant or any fiduciary professional whatsoever, and if you're a billionaire, you have many accountants. So why are you listening to me? To be able to claim this painting is now worth $50 million, you have to get it appraised by a professional and have them certify that it's worth that much. A professional that might be a friend of yours or friends of the dealer, who all have incentives to make you happy. So you get that independent professional to appraise your masterpiece at 50 mil, then you can donate it to the museum and then you can write off that 50 mil? Not quite. See, you made 100 mil this year. Your donation is 50 mil, but the tax code only allows you to deduct no more than 30% of your income from donations. So out of that 50 mil donation, you can only deduct 30 mil of that, leaving your new taxable income at 70 mil, saving you millions of dollars that otherwise would have gone to greedy Uncle Sam. But do not fret, because that remaining 20 mil of your donation that you couldn't deduct, you can spread out that deduction over the next 5 years. Combine that art donation with a few other tax strategies and Uncle Sam gets pennies on the dollar. Again, not professional advice. So in the end, you keep more of your money, the museum gets a work of art that they couldn't afford on their own, you get your name displayed next to the painting for that status, the prestige of the artist and dealer goes up, and literally everyone is happy. Th thanks to a few strokes of paint on canvas or a banana duct tape onto a wall or whatever. But let's say you don't need a giant tax deduction this year, but you need the cash that's tied up in this painting you got that's gone way up in value. Well then, it's time to take it to auction. Taking an artwork to auction can be really exciting. The great thing about auctions is that you can use crowd psychology to your advantage. People bidding will make other people want to bid, and not just for the product, but to feed their ego and to beat the other bidders. Combine that with the scarcity of an auction and you have the perfect recipe for bad financial decisions. On the part of the buyer, good financial decision for you. But Jake, what if people don't bid up the price very high? Don't you worry because another great thing about auctions is that the auction house can arrange a reserve price guarantee. They do this by finding an interested buyer in advance that agrees to pay a reserve price if the auction doesn't meet that amount, undisclosed to the public. And in exchange, if the auction goes over that reserve price, this person gets a portion of the proceeds above that guarantee. But wait, there's more. See, in any typical sale of a house, for example, the names of the buyers and sellers go on paper. But in auctions, the identity of both are typically concealed. Sometimes the auction house might not even know who the seller is. Thanks to this privacy, theoretically, you can even bid up your own auctions. 
and once the auction starts, that's where the fun begins. The auctioneer plays an important role. The right one can really up the bidding. The wrong one can ruin everything. One cool trick they pull is called chandelier bidding, where the auctioneer will literally pretend to point at bids in the room, when in reality, they're often pointing to nothing more than light fixtures. And hopefully, if there's enough hype around the piece, if you listed the piece at the right time, you'll walk away with a fat stack of cash. That isn't taxed as ordinary income, mind you, but as long-term capital gains tax, which is a lot lower than ordinary income. And boom, whatever route you choose, everyone wins. The gallery and dealers win, you win, the artist wins, the auction house wins, and the museum wins. And if you decide to keep the painting, it can still come in handy. Again, there aren't a lot of assets out there that can hold $450 million worth of value in the size of a painting completely anonymously besides crypto which is volatile. Fine art makes for a great addition to that emergency vault along with some cash, precious metals, passports, some crypto hard wallets along with jewelry which is in kind of the same boat. Like these beautiful, innovative Jacob & Co. Astronomia gravitational triple axis tourbillon watches that sell for anywhere from half a mil to over a mil. Or their mystery tourbillon watches that sell anywhere from 1.6 mil to 2 mil. Where else can you find assets like this that hold this much value in the size of a painting or wristwatch outside of crypto? And one convenient thing about jewelry is that you don't have to declare the value of your jewelry like you do for cash when flying. And back to artwork, you can even take out a loan against your artwork to avoid having to sell it. Which again, you need to get appraised first by a pro. But again, none of this matters if you lack resources. That is where Trends comes in, arguably the most resourceful platform on the internet for entrepreneurs, where learning about the next big thing is as easy as opening up an email. Their army of analysts dig through millions of searches, scouring the deepest parts of the web and search for emerging data on interesting topics that hold the potential to change the world. When the Trends team finds something that needs to be on your radar, they'll send you a signal so you can learn more about it. Signals about everything from Slack apps to vertical farming. Take Chris for example, one of Trent's many success stories. He built his third-party logistics company Send Eats because he read Trent's article about the A to Z of the rise of the anything as a service industry. Thanks to the help of the Trent's community, Chris has already grown the business to tens of thousands of orders every month. Or consider Narek. When Trent sent Narek an email about the booming indoor plant industry, he didn't hesitate. Soon after receiving the signal, Narek launched his very own direct-to-consumer indoor plant startup. After announcing the project in the Trent's community, he collected feedback and got to work. 40 days later, he raised $1.5 million in funding. Still not convinced? Trends even holds live Q&As with industry leaders to review their secrets so you can learn from the masters. Head over to trends.co slash jaketrend or click the link in the video description below to get your first week of trends for just $1. There's no commitment, no catch, and you can cancel anytime. Again, that's trends.co slash jaketrend. Do you want to win $1,000? Here's what you have to do. Number one, subscribe to this channel. And number two, submit to me a video idea for this channel that you think will go viral and get at least a million views. You can submit that video idea with the link below and that is literally it. If I end up choosing your video idea and your title, etc., I will be sending you $1,000 of my own money and your idea will be forever cemented on this channel. You can submit your video idea with the link below. Just make sure you read all the instructions. You can submit as many ideas as you want. Just don't spam it or do anything stupid. If you do, you will be banned. If you're not aware, we've recently done videos on how China is enslaving Africa in debt, where we talked to an actual person that's enslaved countries in debt before. Meet America's hedge fund billionaires, the apex predators of Wall Street. Why haven't we seen hyperinflation yet, where we talked to Peter Schiff. So if these videos sound interesting to you, consider subscribing and turning on that notification bell. Shout out to Salvatore for following me on Instagram. Every single week, I'll be following back one of you guys and giving you guys a shout out in the new video. So make sure you follow me at jaketrend.io. And one final shout out to a YouTuber named Eric. He is an incredibly entertaining YouTuber to watch. And I just met him a few days ago, super chill guy, super genuine guy, and he is the person responsible for you guys getting free money from me and Instagram shoutouts. You can subscribe to his channel with the link below and let him know that I sent you. That's gonna wrap it up for this video. Thank you so much for watching. You've been awesome. I've been Jake. Stay dangerous out there and I will see you guys in the next one.